All right, so today with just four parts, we're gonna make a kick-ass simulator. Let's get to it. All right, so continuing our series on building flight simulator components, uh, today we're building the core of our flight simulator, the actual panel and uh, embedded LCD displays. Um, we're only gonna be using four parts and we're gonna be able to get ourselves our simulator up and running and that's kind of really cool. Um, this has kind of been set up a little bit as a budget build. Uh, we're intentionally using components that are more affordable so that you can get your simulator up and running without you know, breaking the bank. So to that end, we're using this Logitech yoke system. Uh, I really actually like this yoke system for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, the build quality is fairly okay. Uh, it's not the best that's out there, not by a long shot. Even our own hand-built stuff, which we're gonna be doing some tutorials on, blow this away. However, for something that's plug and play, really accessible, you can buy this anywhere online, uh, and it's frankly, other big selling point, it's cost. 140 bucks and you get a decent yoke system that has good features um, and, you know, a couple nice accessories to it with that throttle quadrant. Uh, not a bad little setup. So uh, that's gonna help keep our budget down. On the other side, instead of taking and buying all of the individual Logitech gauge uh, uh, LCDs, which is what I had done with my first uh, flight simulator, and don't get me wrong, they're great, but man, at 140 bucks a pop, the same cost as a yoke system, well, for $120, I can get beautiful, giant 12 uh, inch, LCD touch screens that I can embed in my uh, flight panel down here and I can reproduce every one of those instruments that I would want to or modern glass cockpit style flying displays and GPS's and whatnot um, so 120 bucks we're gonna be using two of these in this build really a nice product um, very easy to use uh, and if you're using X plane which is what I'm using uh, the interfaces are just plug and play with this, they're automatic. Um, you literally click the instrument, drag it out onto this screen, and you're set. Now, that does mean you have to have a moderately newer generation uh, video card, somewhere in the 900 series from NVIDIA or an equivalent that has uh, at least two additional HDMI outputs besides what you're using for your main monitor. Uh, so we need three outputs on, a, on our video card. That is really, really common these days. And in fact, uh, those types of video cards, even a generation or two older, are very affordable. So that's why I feel good about recommending this as a solution. If you've got a computer that is capable of uh, you know, running a simulator, you probably already meet that requirement. Uh, lastly, uh, we've got in front of us our flight board. This is a flight board that I designed. Uh, the patterns are all free. Uh, they are on thingiverse.com slash angry zeppelin. And uh, you can download these, you can customize them, modify them, enjoy them and use them however you like. Um, these are really pretty darn nice. So these are designed to run with these large screens embedded in them. We also have some of the Logitech small gauge cluster style and a few universal um, uh, instrumentation uh, places that you can you can put things um, it's a really easy build we used our laser cutter to cut these out a jigsaw and a drill hey a few minutes to print this out really easy to, to build it that way as well you don't have to have the sophisticated tools or you can use a service like Pinoco online or a dozen different uh, uh, maker spaces all the way you know around the world every city has a maker space with a laser cutter and usually you can go in and use those machines at either low to no cost or a membership fee um, I really recommend that if you're gonna be playing with this stuff a lot but uh, yeah pretty basic overview of what we've got to do um, so we're gonna take and pop our ABS panels out here and uh, start mounting our gear into it. And boy, this is one of the fastest builds that you'll see uh, us do here. But uh, boy, the, the results are worth it. So let's get to it. All right, 
So I've done a little bit of the prep work to help us move this forward. Uh, pretty easy stuff. Um, now I have a pot rivet gun. If you don't have a pot rivet gun, you can just use screws for you know the rest of the assembly of this. But uh, I chose to take and join these uh, two separate panels together using a pot rivet gun and a little bit of uh, metal strip. Uh, it's one of those things that I find just makes this feel a little more sturdy a little more rigid, and it gives it that industrial look, you know, that, that look of an actual airplane having some rivets in it. Uh, I've also gone ahead and taken our comm panel uh, cover uh, and installed that with just simply four screws. Uh, this is a placeholder. We'll be building the comm panel in the future. We also have our cutouts over here for our future switch panel, uh, which also includes our ignition, and, uh, you know, we're going to be installing our uh, throttle quadrant down here but we have room for a second in the future or a future accessory, perhaps like a flap switch. All right, let's get into this. This is really, really easy. So we've gone ahead and unboxed our LCD monitor. Uh, again, beautiful little monitors, um, and these are produced by several different vendors, uh, eBay and Amazon. Um, they really do range anywhere from 110 to 130 bucks really a decent find and what we've gone ahead and done is we've taken and created the opening so that it matches uh, the LCD so we can insert that into the actual um, uh, uh, flight board. What we're going to do after that is we're going to take and on the front and back we have a sandwich using these little L brackets on the other side to give it not only a finished look, but to hold it in place. And that's just held in place with eight screws. Once we've done that, uh, boy, this thing's really come together. So let's go ahead and jump forward and get that part done. Alrighty, here we have our monitors all mounted into the flight panel. And you can really see this thing is starting to come to life. We're this close to being done with this build. All we need to do is mount our throttle quadrant and our yoke to the panel. And the panel is actually mounted in such a way that our yoke, we connect to our desk just using the clamp underneath it, and we're done. A couple USB connections, that's it. Let's knock it out. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and mount our throttle quadrant. And this just uses the holes that we've got in our flight board and in the uh, controller that actually came. And we've got a little hole so that that cable can pass through. And all we're doing is we're using the supplied screws uh, that came to mount this to, well, this little desk mount, which we're not gonna use. Uh, again, super easy. We just pass our cable through the front. And using the four supplied screws, and I've added a washer just in case. Uh, give a little more support. Uh, we go ahead and just mount our throttle quadrant to the flight board and then we'll have it in the perfect position whenever we need it. Yeah. Now we're down to the final step. We are going to be connecting, mounting the uh, yoke uh, to the flight board. So you can see how that's positioned. Now, on the Logitech yoke, uh, we have all of these beautiful little uh, mounting screws up here. And these are very long screws that'll allow us to take and just use a simple piece of either angle aluminum or uh, a glued together piece of uh, the ABS plastic um, to make a bracket that will hold these two units together and that'll be strong enough that we can use just the normal mount to the desk to hold this entire thing up on our on our uh, our flight simulator. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and knock that out. All right, we've given a little clearance there. Make sure that that'll fit. And now we're going to. Use a sharpie. To mark our holes. Okay. 
And now I'm going to use my hole punch to punch the little, make those easier for the camera to see. There we go. Alright folks, so here we have it. Uh, we're done. This thing turned out just fantastic. Uh, lots of room to grow on this, adding other capabilities and features, uh, but I'm really satisfied with the way that this turned out. Now, truth be told, I've made a few of these and I've given them away to friends uh, just because I enjoy flight that much and the opportunity to take and make something that we do in the hobby of RC and make it tangible, hopefully it's a step to the real thing. Well, shoot, that's kind of fun. And you know, one of the big drivers or motivations for me, um, you know, aside for having to make that one little mounting plate that I had forgotten about, uh, this is a super easy build. And even then, if you go to your local hardware store, you can easily pick up a piece of angle aluminum, cost you a couple bucks, and it would work really well for that little mounting bracket in the back. All we have to do now is plug this thing in, and we have two USBs uh, for um, the screens, one USB from our uh, yoke and throttle co quadrant uh, combination, and, and that's it, we're flying. So. Uh, you know, again, I recommend you do this. This is pretty affordable. Uh, all the parts for this build are down in the description. Uh, you can take and, and find those all on Amazon. We've gone ahead and linked to them all. And again, we'll link down below to the, uh, the flight board uh, plan so you can download them, but they're uh, available at thingiverse.com slash angry zeppelin. And uh, fun build, I'm glad I could share it with you guys. Uh, next uh, uh, segment, we're going to be working on our um, communications and switch panels. To upgrade this, we're going to be using an Arduino. Super easy, super cheap, so look forward to that video soon. And until then, keep flying. <laughs>